Hello everyone, I'm Sue the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to explain something that's been bothering me a lot, which is the reviews for State of Decay 2. They've just been bothering me. Now real quick, some of you have been asking when I'm going to live stream it. I actually live stream it on DLive, so if you check the description to Steam it, Steam it's connected to DLive, so you can just go ahead and click that. You'll figure it out, you just follow me, I'll be streaming every once in a while. But anyways, this, the reviews for State of Decay 2 are like, this isn't the game we expected. This game is lower quality than we thought it was. It doesn't do too much from the original game, right? That's kind of the negative parts. The positive parts are, I'm, I'm like the positive person, so I'll explain the positive parts. But I want to explain something real quick, and it's that State of Decay 1 was not the definitive State of Decay experience. I remember the developers talking about this. I want to say it was on a live stream, but it might have been some interview um, they did a long, long time ago when they made, I think, Year 1 edition, maybe even before Year 1, and it's that State of Decay 2 would be the game that they originally wanted. Because State of Decay 1, if you remember, on Xbox 360, they said that there was a limitation to what they could put into the game. I believe it was 2 gigabytes they were allowed to put into the game. And Because I remember, whatever gigabyte limit they set was 2, 10, whatever, I remember downloading the game, and it was exactly that gigabyte limit. I, I, I think it was 2. I'm going to stick with two. So, with the two gigabyte limit, there was only so much they could do. And the game was exactly... Okay, I'm going to be honest. The game was exactly what they said it was going to be. Right? You drive around like GTA, you scavenge, you might have to go to a different town to get the resources you need, which means you risk, you may have to take a car. And then they took all the things, most of the stuff in that game, not all of them, but the stuff in that game that was good, and they improved upon it putting stuff in the back of cars, having people follow you around because, you, you know, you might die. They added Breakdown as a DLC, which should have been there in the beginning, I admit, should have been there, which was basically, honestly, Breakdown is the way to play that game, not the story mode. The story mode is like a big, long tutorial because Breakdown, you skip the tutorial, go straight into the action, right? Then Life, the, what was it, Lifeline, whatever the second DLC was, amazing DLC, like, that was an awesome way. That was a different game mode altogether. But the original State of Decay just bumped up everything they did during the updates. State of Decay 2 comes out. What does State of Decay 2 do? It improves on... The game runs a bit better uh, sometimes. And it improves on community dynamics. Uh, makes everything easier to deal with. Makes base building way more complicated. And actually what it... You know, it makes it... Takes that customizability personalization and bumps it up. Right, the characters, specialization, skill trees, those are all improved. Gunplay is the same, basically. They changed the crosshair, which was a good thing. And generally speaking, the game's tutorial is easier to understand, and the game runs just, it's faster paced. You can skip the tutorial now. You can have multiple save files. But, here's what I want to point out. This game is what they envisioned State of Decay 1 to be. State of Decay 2 is the definitive edition. Here's how I view the two games. State of Decay 1 is not State of Decay. State of Decay 2 is the definitive edition. State of Decay 1, to me, is a bunch of concepts put together. It's not even a pre-alpha for State of Decay 2. It's like, hey, we're inexperienced develop. I don't know how inexperienced Undead is. This is our first game. We're going to build it. They learned from it. If you guys ever played... Two. If you played two, you get through all all things you do are faster. I don't think any I haven't heard anyone talk about that. The whole game is faster paced than the first one. And what they did limiting you to like one town, then you move to town town, the way that works makes so much more sense than the first one. I mean granted, I personally would like to be able to drive to the other towns, but I understand what they did with the um staying in one town because of the the goal system you actually have a goal now other than escape right and freaking all three game versions of the game in state one all the dlc the two dlc in the main game you just had to escape in this one you have a goal whatever main character you have that's their goal they have their special things that they want to do and it's just like i don't get why people hate this game because the devs said they wanted this this game is their main game I am 100% certain that if you ask the devs 
what they think of State 1, and it's not a full game. It's not. The DLC's made it a full game, but it's not a full game. State 2 is a full game. The multiplayer, with limiting the containers, makes so much sense if you actually play it. Like, if you actually play multiplayer for a good extended period of time, the whole system flows almost flawlessly. Sometimes, you know, the, the whoever joins your session, if you're, if you're playing two players, usually the second player gets kind of less loot and they just run around killing stuff. But it still makes sense the way it works. So, I want you guys to remember this also. State of Decay 2 is not a $60 game. It is a $30 game. And my general rule of thumb is if I buy a video game, um, if it is meant to be played for a long period of time, such as Call of Duty, Battlefield, State of Decay 1, um, and it's not a story-based game, such as, you know, any of the Walking Dead games, really, and uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance, if I get exactly the same amount of hours or more than how much I paid for the game, so if I pay $30, I get 30 hours in it, $60, 60 hours, it's a good investment for me, right? A dollar an hour for fun, I mean, think of a movie. If you rent a movie on Amazon, it's like $4 for a two-hour movie. It's pretty good if you think about it. And if you're not renting a video game, you get to keep it forever. Maybe one of your friends wants it. You give it to them for $15. I mean, I don't have it on disc. I have it on Game Pass. But you give it to them for half the price, then you only paid 50 cents an hour. Right? So I want everyone to remember that State of Decay 2 is the way that the devs wanted the original State of Decay to do. And State of Decay 1 should not be used as a baseline for what these games should be. State 2 should. I've always thought State 2 should be the baseline for what these games should be. Not ever State 1. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I, I, I love this game. I love it way more than the first one. Because the first one, I wanted to play it more. And it was missing all the features that the second one makes, you know, fun. I still, it's, it's awesome. So, opposite the casual gamer, I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I will see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or steam it post of whatever I decide to make. And one reminder, I do live stream on DLive. Once I get my Amazon business set up, I'm not going to be streaming on DLive as much because I'm not going to need to so much. So I'll probably go back to YouTube. Just letting you guys know.